Hey, good morning, and welcome to A Few Godly Men, Volume 2, Conclusion, Part 10. Conclusion, Part 10, with your man, Pastor Reverend Itel Balmaseer, brought to you today by Spirit of Excellence Ministries. And we're going to recap Volume 2, the first nine episodes, before we transition into Volume 3, as we continue our, biblically, our biblical look at men, the men that God interacted with, the men that God blessed, the men that God actually had to judge from time to time, the men who were flawed, the men who made mistakes, but they were still men that God interacted with in their generation. So in volume two, we began with dealing with, uh, with Enoch and with, with the geology of man. We went through that, we got to Noah, let me back up. So. What did we learn from Enoch? Well, Enoch was a godly man. Enoch walked with God in his generation. Enoch did not taste death. Enoch lived 365 years and he was no more. You know, we look at the Bible. Enoch is the only person that we can look at that was, did not taste death. And in those days, men lived 900 years plus, but Enoch walked with God he was from the line of Seth and Enos, and he brought men back to God, and he was a godly example on how to live for God and his generation. Out of that line, we then hear about Noah. So Noah was a man after God's own heart, because during that window of time after Enoch left, God no longer interacted with man due to man's fleshly nature. God gave men 120 years to live on the earth. And after that, they were supposed to transition into the afterlife. And God left men who understood God and knew how to worship God as examples, as mature men for those who followed. However, man did not follow those examples. They fell into a state of great wickedness and sin and moved further and further away from God which allowed God's judgment and accountability to show up. Just like accountability showed up with Adam and Eve, just like accountability showed up with, with Cain when he, when he murdered God's image and Abel because of jealousy. When we don't do it God's way and we choose to disobey God, accountability will show up. So how did God, how did accountability show up? Good question. So now Noah, is the man who is walking with God in his generation. And therefore, God says, I'm going to make a covenant with you, Noah, and with your family. Noah had to walk in an act of faith, and the act of faith was to be able to build the ark and a male and female of all animals that God told Noah to store in the ark. Hey, God gave Noah instructions to test his faith, and Noah completed those instructions, hallelujah. Noah also saw when God said he closed the door in the ark because he was the one who was making judgment. He was the one who was holding people accountable. Then it says that God remembered Noah and his creations and he, and he came back and he, he rescinded the waters and he taught Noah how to wait on the Lord to before he walked on dry land. Hey, when Noah got on the dry land, when the time was right, Noah was grateful and he worshiped God and God blessed them and placed the, placed the fear of all the animals that God had created under man so that they would walk in fear of man. And God gave him one instruction after that point, actually two of the same instructions. He said, thou shalt not kill, the image of God, you should not spill innocent blood. And then he also said that you are not, you are to be a hunter. And when you hunt, you are not to drink the blood of those things that he have killed. So God spoke a new covenant with man and his creation, put a rainbow on the side to show him, to show man and animal, hey, I will never destroy the whole earth again because of wickedness or because of evil in the land. So Noah and his family were saved because he walked with God. Now, here's the next thing that happened. Noah, post his flood experience, lost his focus. Let, explain, let me explain. 
Noah became focused on being a husband. He planted a vineyard. His weakness of Noah was he became drunk and he was naked. And because he was drunk and he was naked and he was not sober and he was not alert, his son mistakenly walked into the tent, not knowing he was drunk, not knowing he was naked, and he saw his father nakedness. The young son ran to his brothers, shared it with his older, his older brothers, and they went into the tent, walked backwards, and covered their father's nakedness. Now, when Noah awakened from his mistake, when he awakened and was made aware of what Ham saw, he did not he did not take accountability for what he what he did that put his son in that situation. He said, "I'm going to put a curse on him because of what he did." Now, a lot of people have taught us, they preached us, they made us, they made people feel of the African American um, consent or or lie that hey. You should be a slave because of the curse of Ham. But the curse of Ham was never spoken by God. It was not a consequence given by God. It was a consequence given by Noah because of his shame and his guilt for what he had done and a lack of accountability to God for what he did. Let's move on. So even though the curse or the consequence was uttered by Noah, Ham's line includes Cush, which gives us Nimrod, who was the mighty, mighty warrior, a mighty hunter, and the first developer of the world's greatest nation that will later be called Babel. He came out of the line of Cush, he came out of the line of Ham, and he was no one slave. Hallelujah. Let's move on. So we can learn from Nimrod's experience something else as well. Although he was blessed with strength and wisdom, and he was a great hunter, he also had a spirit of pride that showed up. Humankind had one language, and they had great occupational and constructional skills, and humankind made a decision without seeking God. And what was that decision? That they wanted to make a name for themselves by creating this tower that would reach up to heaven. Why was that wrong? Because mankind made a decision that they did not check with God on. So when God showed up to check humankind's or mankind's action, he always checks mankind's heart in the midst of what they're doing. So mankind have you had imagination, they had creativity, they can come up with all these things because all those things are created in collaboration and in unity. But the full guy had showed up and said, okay, we need to create diversity of language because they are on one accord, but their oneness is not pointed in the right direction. So the full God, God had showed up, scattered the nation, and they no longer could execute their original plan because their language had been changed. Hallelujah. So then when we look at this, God shows up. We see Abram shows up in the line of Noah, and now we're going to see, okay, what is God saying with, with Abram? So Abram shows up, God gives him a blessing, he gives him a promise, he gives him instruction, similar that he gave to Noah, that he wants him to leave with his kinship, leave his family, leave his mother, leave his mother, leave his father, leave the land in which he knew, take all that you have, take a couple of relatives with you, and leave. And then Abram, not knowing where God was sending him, not knowing God's whole plan, actually executed the plan as God had instructed him. And because he did that, man, God gave him a promise and a blessing of a seed and that he would make Abram a nation, a great nation. And Abram worshiped God on the altar. And all of a sudden, God was pleased again with Abram and gave him more instructions and more directions. Now, what we got to watch the things that we got to learn from Abram as a negative thing is that famine showed up in the land, circumstances showed up in the land, and Abram lost focus off of God and became fearful of man, became fearful of the Egyptians as he continued to move because of the famine in the land became a began to manipulate the Egyptians 
because he walked through a spirit of fear because of their reputation and he lied about his wife being his sister which positioned the pharaoh and the princess to make decisions that brought God's consequences and God's accountability upon them because they were touching something that belonged to Abram and Abram again sat quietly and allowed it to happen. Hey, sometimes it's not just what we, what we do, but it's what we allow others to do. As believers, as a walking epistle spread of man, we're supposed to call out things that are wrong in a life-giving way. We are not to position others to fail because of our fear and because of our inability to do it God's way. We are to be walking epistles spread of man. So Pharaoh found out about this spirit of manipulation that Abram used against him, and he sent Abram and his wife and his kindred and all that he blessed Abram with, he sent them out of Egypt because of this thing that Abram had done. Hey, let's not manipulate people. Hey, let's not fall into the spirit of trickery. Let's not follow the, the spirit of lies that comes from the devil. Let's do things God's way. And although Abram made this mistake, although Abram fell in the spirit of fear, God showed up and help Abram have a sound mind, bless them with these items, and sent them on his way. And we're going to see when we start volume three, all these things that God did through Abram and for Abram in his life. Hey, may God keep you. Hey, may God bless you. Hey, may God prosper you. Hey, may the favor of God encamp around you. Until next time.